Well, good morning. Welcome back to Tail Three Cabins. We're out in South Dakota, the Badlands. It's about a mile outside the National Park. And this is the perfect time to test a little product that we got in the mail. I reached out to this company after we got our RV. I was looking into solutions because this is a hybrid camper and hybrid campers have pros and cons to them, just like a pop-up camper. So the bump outs on the sides are made out of canvas, which is good when you want to expand. It keeps the camper lightweight, but there are some cons to it. Weather, setup, temperature, sun beating on the canvas kind of increases the temperature a little bit warmer on the sides than inside the RV. And same thing when it gets cold out. So to try to even out some of the pros and cons, I'm gonna test this product out. And basically it's called a gecko. This is how it came packaged. A little bit smaller than I thought it was gonna be, but let's get this open, test it out, and see if it's gonna help that scale of pros and cons and maybe make a hybrid camper a little bit more on the pro side. I just want to be very careful and not cut anything because I don't know how deep that this plastic goes and I don't want to cut into the cover itself. So as I mentioned earlier this cover has a black side that if you put the black side out that that is for your cooler temperatures and when you're in the sun or the warm temperatures you would use the foil side. I've been thinking about buying a collapsible ladder, but I just haven't broke the bank yet. Or a three-step step stool. That would be helpful in this manner. Now, I did just try taking out the pole of the bump out, just to collapse it a little bit, to, so I get a little better reach to get the uh, cover on. Essentially, you want to get it as high as you can, and then there's two clips that are going to go up towards the top corners. So I could install this properly. I ended up just standing on Karen's shoulders, so I could get the two top clips up in the upper corners easily. So essentially it's like two clamps and you want to grab a little bit of your canvas fabric. There's a little seam on there that makes it perfect to grab and then just clamp it down. I didn't put it all the way up just so you can see that seam and then I'll cinch it up here. Just after receiving this I got an email from Gecko and they changed their clamps to these ratcheting clamps which will make it a lot easier. These clamps are something you'd find similar in a workshop or a wood shop. So I really didn't stand on Karen's shoulders. I ended up just driving my pickup truck over and standing on the tailgate. Now when you receive your get-go, there'll be a QR code that you can scan and it'll give you directions on how to install it. It's about a two and a half or three minute video. So it is very helpful. Also I would just want to mention that these geckos come in different sizes and so do different campers. So if you're not sure what you need, it's a good bet is just to call the company and they'll help you out, try to get you the right fit. They're not all going to fit perfect. It's not going to be like a tailor-made fit. Some might be a little bit looser than normal, but they can help you get very, very close. The zippers on each side of the cover. Now we installed with the foil side out because we are in the middle of the Badlands right now and it's very warm. Temps have been in the 90s lately. It's not the heat of the day yet, but um, it's going to get there. So once we're installed, we're going to do a couple tests. I have some temperature sensors. I'm going to put them on both sides of our bump outs. And also I'm going to check the noise levels too, just to see if it does muffle the noise at all. Now when I first started doing research on purchasing a hybrid camper, one of the go-to items that everybody said that you had to get was called a pop-up gizmo or a pug. And that was the most popular thing on the market to try to shield you from some sun or to try to keep a little bit of the heat from uh, radiating out of the top of the canvas. And what I noticed is a lot of people that bought the pugs would install it on top of their bump out, but then they would also buy this material called Reflectix. And it's sold by Home Depot and some other home and garden shops. And it's basically a roll of reflective material. It's maybe about an eighth to a quarter inch thick. And they would cut out sides to put on the inside of their bump out <laughs> to get a little bit more insulation or reflect some of that sunshine. So this kind of takes care of that all in one package. You get the 
the top of your roof covered, you got the sides covered, you can unzip this and roll up your sides if you still want to use your windows. And we're going to put this to the test now. I got a temperature gauge in here in the little hammock, and then I got a temperature gauge on the other side of the bump out with nothing on it, no gecko or anything. And we'll see if there's a difference in the temperature between the two areas. I tried to make sure that I could get equal sun on both sides the best that I can, so this would be a fair test. So the side with the gecko is currently 77 degrees, and the side with nothing on it is 89 degrees Fahrenheit. Now even without using the temperature sensors, you could easily go in there, put your hand and feel around up towards the ceiling of the bump out, and you could definitely tell there was a difference. So I gotta say that the gecko does work well when it comes to reflecting the heat away from the bump out in the hot sun. Now next up, a lot of people on the forums were asking if it helped with any sound deadening so I brought up my generator out and I'm going to position it just outside the RV I tried to walk it off and put it dead center in between the two bump outs and I have an OSHA app on my phone that will measure decibel levels and we'll see between the two which one is quieter or if it's just the same Okay, this is the side with the gecko cover on. And this is the other bump out with no cover on at all. So it was around three or four decibels different. It was a little quieter with the gecko on, but probably not that noticeable. So we're starting to get into the heat of the day now and we're going to turn the generator on, also turn on the air conditioning and face the vents to go inside each bump out. Alright, with the air conditioner running, the gecko side is still 13 degrees cooler than the plane side. All right, I think the gecko proved itself in the hot sunny weather. Now let's find a cooler spot where we could test the black side of the cover. So we originally intended to do the cold weather testing in the Grand Tetons because that's where the weather is going to be coldest on our trip. But we just got a warning that tomorrow they're going to have high heat records and that's where we're going to be tomorrow. So I don't think that's going to work out. So what we ended up doing is we're staying in Yellowstone right now. We're in Lewis Lake campgrounds and the temps have been dipping down into the high 30s at night. So we put the gecko on, we put the black side out, put a temperature sensor in there and one in the back. And then we went to bed overnight. When we woke up, the temps were pretty chilly. And these were the results. So we had around 47 degrees underneath the gecko. And then without the cover in the back, that was at 38 degrees, which was almost what the temperature was outside that morning. And then inside the trailer was a little bit warmer. All in all, the gecko does very well when it comes to regulating the temperature. It's gonna keep you 10 to 15 or maybe 20 degrees cooler when you got the sun beating down on it, especially on a hot day. And then it's going to keep you a little bit warmer and it's chilly at night. That's going to save you a little bit of propane. Now when we did this test, we didn't run the furnace. We didn't have any heater on or anything. We were just, um, actually we had a window open until just before we went to bed. So I can envision this is going to save you some propane if you're off the grid and you're using your furnace. Or it's going to cut down on a little bit of electricity if you're using a fireplace that's built in with your camper. Or a small space heater. Now if you're looking into purchasing one of these I would check with the company tell them what sort of camper you have what sort of bump out you have and they could probably help you get the proper fit or size. It comes in different sizes and they are upgrading their sizes from time to time. 
I'm a member of a lot of forums on Facebook and some other places that have to do with either the Rockwood Rue, hybrid travel trailers, or pop-up campers. And the people that have been using this before me, I have not heard any bad reviews on it. They are concerned about getting the proper fit, but the ones that own it say that it works great, that it helps them when it's cold out, it helps them when it's warm out. Um, they haven't had issues when it's windy. I really haven't heard any complaints about it overall. So that's my take on this gecko. I appreciate everybody watching. Hope you enjoy and subscribe to these videos. Click on that little bell when you want to know when a new one's coming out. We're going to get back to some tractor work next week and then maybe catch up on where we're at out west the week after that. So thanks for watching and take care everybody.